Shalom, Yashar Allah. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechaha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> of Great Millstone who rule well and taught me this 100% truth. Double salutations to the Archeum out there, spreading his word in truth and sincerity. And shalom to the few Akwath, <coughs> excuse me, that are listening in today. I'm back at you with another lesson entitled Pentagon UFO Chief says mothership is possibly in our solar system. All right. And this is a, um, a article from uh, the End Times headlines. I'm going to try and leave the uh, the link in the description. At the end of the, you know, I, I'll, I'll try and leave the link in the description so you can check it out. Because um, I'm not going to read all of it. I'm going to touch on a small part of it. Because, <clears throat> you know, uh, pretty much the point is in the title anyway. And today is March the 11th. So this article was released uh, yesterday. Okay. <clears throat> so, um... If you've been keeping up with, you know, the affairs of the world, one of the things you'll notice is that there has been a significant increase in the amount of chariot signs that people are seeing. All right. So um, we know what these chariots are. But, you know, the people in the world are bugging out because they think it's like little green Martians traveling around in these vehicles. And, you know, they don't really know what all of it means. But, you know, through the spirit and power of your how about Shem Yashai, we know. All right, but anyways, <clears throat> without further ado, let's um, let's read some of it, man. So it says, uh, opinion. There's a possibility that extraterrestrial motherships and smaller probes may be visiting planets in our solar system. The head of the Pentagon's unidentified aerial phenomena research office noted in a report draft shared Tuesday, and that's absolutely correct. These so-called UFOs, which you know as the chariots of the Lord or the chariots of our salvation, have most definitely been um, visiting um, the earth. Okay. You know, scriptures say that the eyes of the Lord are what? Uh, ten times brighter than the sun, roughly paraphrasing. All right, and they're beholding all the good and the evil that takes place on this earth. And of course, eventually that's going to bring in the Lord's judgment, man. Okay, which we know uh, that the, uh, <clears throat> the chariots are coming to do two things. To destroy this wicked kingdom and to bring salvation to the elect of the nation, <clears throat> excuse me, of the nation of Israel. Right. So um, let's read on. It says an artificial interstellar object could potentially be a parent craft that releases many small probes during its close passage to Earth, which is true because we've seen videos out there of uh, bigger ships, you know, smaller ships coming out of bigger ships. All right. So this is absolutely correct. It's 1144, by the way, right now. Abaratazar, we make it as part of the hopeful elect. Okay. You know, but um, there's been many videos of this sort of pattern, this sort of behavior happening with the chariots in which it's lucky the video got cut off because um, <clears throat> I received the phone call. You know, I usually have it on Do Not Disturb, which it is, but, you know, um, <laughs> when you receive calls from your favorites, uh, people you mark as favorite, you know, I have to, to go through. But anyways, that's besides the point. Um, so, um as I was saying about the chariots. Yeah, so there's been many videos out there showing these chariots um, pretty much coming, um, you know, smaller ships coming out of bigger ships. Okay. So this is very uh, much accurate in its depiction. So let's read this par passage, passage again. An artificial interstellar object <clears throat> could potentially be a parent craft that releases uh, many small probes during its close passage to Earth. 
an operational construct not too dissimilar from NASA missions, Sean Kirkpatrick, director of the Pentagon's All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, wrote in a research report co-authorised by Abraham Loeb, chairman of Harvard University's astronomy department. All right, so, you know, the Pentagon, they're, they're looking into this, right? And um, they can't seem to figure out how it operates, how it's able to manoeuvre the way it does, you know, how they're able to just appear on a radar and then disappear and even literally appear and disappear, all right? So um, pretty much Esau's fighting a losing battle, but um, the spirit of the Lord is going to have it to where they're still going to put the spirit on them to fight, even though... Um, you know, <clears throat> Esau has never faced any sort, any type of technology like this. All right, but that's that's just the prophecies, man. That's just how it's gonna go. Um, so, without further ado, let's bring the precepts out. It's a Revelation chapter one, verse seven, and it reads, "Behold, he cometh with clouds." Now, these clouds are talking about UFOs, so-called UFOs. The chariots of the Lord, the chariots of our salvation. They are commonly referred to in the Bible as clouds. All right. And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so Amon. Right? So every eye is going to see the chariots of the Lord, man. You're not going to be on the part of the earth where you ain't going to see chariots, man. The sky is going to be filled with the chariots of Yahweh Ba'ashim Shai when the time of threshing comes, which is, is, is near, man. I believe the doomsday clock was set to, what, 90 minutes until doomsday, until, uh, until uh, 12 o'clock, until noon, all right, which would represent destruction. Okay, let's go to Second Kings. <clears throat> Chapter 6 To prove to you that this ain't no new technology right? The, the, these chariots have been On the scene For, for years right? This ain't nothing new all right? And we're uh, Stirring up your minds By way of pure remembrance As it says in the book of uh, I believe that's 1st Peter Or it might be 2nd Peter chapter 3 Okay <clears throat> Uh, this is Second Kings chapter 6 And verse 16 And it reads And he answered Fear not For they that be with us Are more Than they that be with them Alright So we need not to fear uh, The military might Of Esau Edom His military capabilities So on and so forth Right Because The chariots of the Lord Are far they far surpass um, the glory of Esau's military, man. And you just wait when the Lord shows you that. All right? <clears throat> when the Lord fights for us, you just wait and see, man. Okay? Second Kings 6 and 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold... The mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. All right, and this is talking about the so-called UFOs. Obviously, the Bible is an old book. It's not just going to say, oh, yeah, they saw UFOs, right? First of all, the prophets of, of those days, uh, they weren't familiar with that sort of terminology. Uh, UFO is, is a fairly new terminology, right? So the prophets of those days would describe the chariots as, as um, according to the language that was used back then. All right? And horse represents power. And these chariots are extremely powerful. All right? So, um, you know, Elisha was describing it. Um and those words commonly used then, all right? But we know through the Spirit exactly what he's talking about, right? 
It says, And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Okay. Once again, these are the so-called UFOs, man. Same thing we're seeing today is the same thing Elisha was seeing back then. All right. As the scripture says, there is no new thing under the sun, right? Let's go to, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's go to Second Ezra 13. We'll start at verse 3 and it reads, And behold, and I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. Now this is talking about Yahweh Shai. Alright? Yahweh Shai and his ship. Right? When they see Yahweh Shai, his chariot, and, and the, the angels and their chariots, they're, they're going to be shook, man. <laughs> they're going to be shooketh. You best believe that, man. Esau Edom going to be bugging out, man. Going to be bugging out. Okay? Verse 4. And whenever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it faileth the fire. So when the laser beam came out of the mouth of the chariot, it caused much destruction. It burned things up. It destroyed things, right? Verse 5, And after this I beheld, and lo, there was a great... Sorry. There was gathered together a multitude of men from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. This is talking about Yahweh Shai coming from outer space. And the other nations uh, trying to come together to take down the common enemy which would of course be Yahweh Shai along with the holy angels all right but they're not going to prevail pursuing to, to scriptures man and we're going to bring that out soon okay verse 6 but I beheld and lo he had graved himself a great mountain this so-called mothership that they're talking about in this article which we'll say is fathership Right, this great mountain, this great chariot, this great UFO, in which other smaller UFOs uh, um, 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 come out of it. Okay, verse six. But I beheld, and lo, he engraved himself a great mountain, and flew up upon it. So you see, Esau, Edom's military might, his technology is no match for the chariots. Of our salvation, man. Lord willing, we be numbered amongst the elect. That's no match. Okay. Let's go to um, Second Maccabees. This is the book of Second Maccabees, chapter five, and we'll start at the top. About the same time, Antiochus prepared his second voyage into Egypt, and then it happened that through all the city. For the space of almost 40 days, there were seen horsemen running in the air in cloth of gold and armed with lances like a band of soldiers. And troops of horsemen in array encountering and running one against another with shaking of shields and multitude of pikes and drawing of swords and casting of darts and glittering of golden ornaments and harness of all sorts so what they were seeing they were beholding the glory of the chariots of the lord okay there was there was mesmerized they were scared as well all right they this wasn't any sort of technology that they was um particularly familiar with or understood right they didn't really know what they were but these were the chariots of the Lord showing the, 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 the glory of themselves, right? And what does it say in, ver in, um, uh, in verse 4? Wherefore, every man prayed that the apparition might turn to good. All right. But really, this was the Lord shaking up the armies against Israel by sending them, you know, the chariot sightings so that they can be shaken up, man. 
Because you know, once you're shaken up, your chances of you winning that battle greatly reduces, man. Which is why in Israel, you're allowed not to fight if you feel scared, if you feel worried, because that energy might rub off on some of the other soldiers. And then from there, it's, it's a downward spiral, man. All right. But once again, the, these are the chariots of the Lord, man. This ain't nothing new. This isn't a new threat. Okay. And these chariots are coming to destroy this wicked kingdom, man. All right. It's just, they're just waiting on the Lord's call. We understand there's a few prophecies that need to take place. You know, Jacob's trouble, MOTB, famine of the word, uh, the great insurrection against the men of the Lord. And then um, the end shall come, right? So we just got to hang in there, man. But, but, but things are happening. All right. Things are happening out here. Okay. Let's go to the book of Psalm 68. This is Psalms chapter 68 and verse 17 and it reads, The chariots of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. All right, the Lord is amongst these, amongst these chariots, man. All right, these are the chariots of our salvation. Okay. And the Lord is with them. Let's go to Revelation 12. This is Revelation 12 and verse 7 and it reads, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels. This is talking about Michael, the, the great archangel, the angel of war with the fellow angels in their chariots versus Esau's military might, his fighter jets. Okay. Verse 8, And prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. So Esau didn't prevail against the chariots of the Lord. He lost uh, substantially, which of course cost him his kingdom as well. Right. <clears throat> Verse nine. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. All right. So, so those fighter jets, they, they was destroyed, man by the chariots of the lord and i heard a loud voice saying in heaven now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our power and the power of his anointed for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our power day and night because what esau would do is he would deliberately do things that will make you go off he'll put pork in your food abominable things in your food advertise certain foods shrimp lobster right make it seem appealing to jake even though he knows we shouldn't be eating those things or make adultery so uh glorified like in the music and stuff just so that he can point at you and be like you see god you see look 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 at him he's wicked he's being wicked what are you gonna do about it lord but really and truly it's it's, it's the devil that's um made that an attractive option for you all right so these devils got a lot to pay for man and you know zachariah 5 talks about how these the chariots is the curse that goes throughout the whole earth all right it's going to be a blessing onto the uh the elect of the nation of israel and a curse onto the heathen nations and the two-third of the nation of israel man but let me close out. Let me leave you with this one more precept. Okay. This is um, Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 2. And it reads, Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. All right. So um, we're not meant to uh, worry when we see the chariots of the Lord, we're not meant to get shaken up. We understand that that um, this is the, the, the vehicles of our salvation. So, yeah, man, we need not to worry, man. Esau, Edom, he has everything to worry about because these chariots are coming to take down his kingdom. All right. Now, you know, I've pretty much made the point there. Um, so hopefully this lesson has been edifying. And until the next time I say Shalom.